In this video, we are going to be building a chatbot application that has persistent memory and the complete chatbot application is going to be running entirely locally using OAMA and Quentry. Once you rerun the application, it is going to be remembering the conversation that you had previously and answer the questions as if you were just continuing the conversation. The logic and architecture of our application is going to be contained within three different layers. The first one is going to be the terminal or the UI layer. Then we have the neural app or neural mind application logic. From there, we're going to be using two external services. The first one is going to be the OAMA instance, which is going to be providing the LM service for us. In this case, we're going to be using Quentry. And for the storage of our conversations, we're going to be using SQLite. Of course, you can replace that with any database that you like. And the flow of the application is going to go from the terminal within the user input. This is going to get into the context builder, which is going to be essentially a list of messages that we're going to be sending to the OAMA instance. Once that we have this, the OAMA instance is going to be giving us a response. And this response is going to be streamed back to the streaming processor that it is an internal quest that we're going to be able to use in order to stream the responses and render them back to the user. After the streaming of the responses are done, we are also going to be storing the messages themselves into our SQLite database. So our chatbots are going to be having persistent memory. If you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to ML Expert Pro. There, you're going to find a complete AI engineering academy that starts from setting up your environment and building a Python and machine learning basics. From there, you're going to learn about classical machine learning and how you can deploy your own models. Then you're going to be able to create Arax, Cax and AI agents and deploy them to production even if you want to deploy your own LOM into a VOM instance and Docker, you can do that with the materials from ML Expert. So if you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to ML Expert Pro. Thank you. If you want to get access to the complete source code of the NeuroMind repository, the code is free and open source, and I'm going to link it down into the description of this video. Here you can find a complete readme with the setup of how you can run this application on your own machine. I have the project open into my local cursor instance and these are the dependencies that we're going to be using. Since Langchain is now over version 1, we're going to be using it along with the Google Gen AI and the OAMA adapters. So this project should be able to run with both OAMA and Gemini. Of course, you can add OpenAI or Anthropic adapters on top of that and run those within your instance. Of course, we're going to be using Pedantic since we want to have some inputs and outputs for the REST API that this application also supports. And we're going to be using Rich for the UI in the terminal itself. Of course, we have uh, also for the fast API, REST API application that we're going to be using within the application. And from there, you can see that most of the code is actually here within the NeuroMind package. Here you can see that we have a config file. Within that, you can see that the both of the supported models that we have are Quentry 8 billion parameter model and the Gemini 2.5 flash. If you want to use the Gemini model, you of course need to have access to a Google Gen AI API key. And here within the environment example file, you can see that you also need to specify your key in order to run this project. And also within the config, you're going to see that we have a uh, different personas. Uh, these are essentially the system prompts that we're going to be using for the user to work with. And those particular personas are added right here. These are the prompts that are in markdown file and you can see them and even add your own if you want to extend this application. Our memory layer 
is going to be using SQL White. So in this case, you can see that when I showed you the demo at the start of this video, we have some of the messages that are now added here within the conversation history. So you can see that we had the human and the AI. So the first message was write a Python function that unreverses a linked list. And we got the response right here. You can see that the reasoning parts are actually excluded from the messages. Of course, you can include them if you want to. And then we have a message that was later added after we restarted the application. This memory layer is going to be managed by the thread manager class. Here you can see that we have a thread, which is going to be essentially the data class that this thread manager is going to be using. This one is going to have an ID, a name, and then a persona. The name of the thread is going to be given by the user itself. When we run the application and creating a new thread, the UI is going to be asking for the thread name. So these are the operations that the thread manager can do. One important thing here is since that this can actually be used in an async environment, I'm going to be using check same thread equal to false. Of course, if you want to use this in any other way, you should probably uh, try to use some other client library for SQLite or maybe even switch the database itself. Uh, here, the more important functions are get or create thread in which we're going to be passing the thread name and the persona type. And then we have get history clear messages so we can clear an existing thread, add a message to a thread and list the existing threads that this current user has. So we'll be able to also switch between the different threads or the different conversations within the COI application. The domain logic of the application or the brain of the application is going to be within the app.py file. And note that here we are only using confirm and prompt from the rich library. Most of the information that we're going to be using here is going to be presented to the UI using a different UI manager that we're going to be essentially delegating information to. So this neuro app application itself is going to be essentially initializing everything that we need in order to run the application. This is going to be running the threat manager that I have just shown you in order to have memory for the application. We have this UI manager, which is going to be using the underlying rich library and present the information to the user. We are also going to be loading all of the personas from the markdown files and know that this is done only once since this class is going to be initialized only once when we run the application. And then from there, we have created a default thread or a default conversation. So once the application starts, the user can immediately start chatting with the default uh, provider and model that we have set up. Then we're going to be initializing the LM itself and this based on the configuration and the context window that we have are going to be passed in as information from the model config provider. And if everything is correct, the application is going to be initialized. From there, you're going to see that we are going to be creating a system prompt within the build context function. And then uh, we're going to be adding the first messages that the first user input is going to be given to us. And here you can see that we have a lot of uh, sorry, a lot of methods, but the entry point for this application is the dot run method. Let me show you the initialization of the app, neuro app with the config of the model and then calling the public method run. This essentially is a while loop which uh, parses the commands that the user is giving and possibly switching to some of the helper methods that are within the application. And here you can see that after some command is going to be executed, we are going to be creating this stream processor. And from there, you're going to be essentially parsing and streaming out the output of the LM back to the user. This is of course going to be also stored to our database or our threat manager. And uh, this information is going to be put back for later if the user wants to recover this particular conversation. 
the streaming processor implementation is relatively simple. Since we're using a reasoning model such as Quen3, we're going to be getting the reasoning content from the additional arguments that are given to us by Langchain within the AM message chain class. And if we are thinking we're going to be adding uh, this substring to the thought buffer, which is created within the initialization of this streaming processor, and otherwise we're going to be adding just the chunk content. Of course, it is possible that none of this information is actually added to the uh, chunks and the content, so essentially they can be empty. If this is the case, this process chunk method is not going to be called at all. The final helper class is going to be the UI manager, which essentially has a list of methods that are going to be called, such as show header, show thread list, get user input, stream response, render stream group, print error, and print info. All of these methods are going to be implemented using, again, the underlying rich library. So most of the imports here are going to be associated with that. And this is going to allow us to separate the domain logic of the neural mind application from the UI, which is going to be presented using the rich library in your terminals. Neural mind also provides a streaming API, which is built on top of fast API. And here you can do pretty much all of the available operations that you want to use within the CLI as well. And here you can see, for example, when you call the get personas, you can also get the threads themselves. And here you can see that we have a master thread and the lead call thread with the message count. So pretty much all of the information and functionality of the application is usable within the API. We have built memory enabled and running completely locally AI application that you can start in your terminal or used as a REST API. It works with OAMA. In our case, we were using Quen3 and then SQLite as database provider. But of course, you can replace those with whichever you want. Thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down in the description of this video. If you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to MXR Pro. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.